There's one last workflow I want to run by you. I'm going to go ahead and save this. I'm going to create a whole nother project. This time I am going to name the project Scene Detected. Because what we're going to do now is pretend that we're given a baked master flattened movie file with no EDL. And if that's the case, then we get to use DaVinci Resolve's automated scene detection to help us create an edit without having to go through and manually razor blade up the edit, which is a tedious thing to do. We've all done it. We don't want to do it. Here's how you can avoid it. Right click the baked master file in the clip details pane. Choose scene cut detection. And what that's going to do when I release the mouse button is it's going to send that clip to the scene page. The scene page is where we go ahead and do our automatic scene detection. What we're going to do is click the start detection button and DaVinci Resolve is going to go through very quickly. This is a much faster than real-time operation. Place spikes on this graph to indicate where DaVinci thinks there are actually cuts. Now, as you can see, this is a little bit messy. The height of each individual graph indicates the confidence that DaVinci has, that that's actually a cut and not something like a swish pan or uh, dissolve or something that could fool the system. These really tall spikes, those are almost definitely cuts. These really short spikes, those probably aren't. And this green dashed line lets you set the threshold of confidence. Using this green line, let's say I bring it all the way up here to the top, this scene details list shows all of the cuts that DaVinci thinks it's found. By raising this bar really, really high, I've dramatically reduced the number of confirmed cuts. If I drag this line lower to intersect more of these spikes, my list is going to grow longer because I'm allowing more of these theoretical cuts to be added to the list. Now, the way you verify whether or not these spikes are actual cuts is to traverse this scene details list. Go through each cut, and what you're looking for, and what we're not finding just yet, is a situation like this. What we're looking at in these three frames, this three up view, is that the leftmost frame is the last frame of the outgoing clip. The middle frame is the first frame of the incoming clip. And then the rightmost frame is the second frame of the incoming clip. So the idea is if you see a completely different frame to the left, with a completely different frame to its right, but then a matching frame to the very right, you know you're sitting on a proper cut. Because this is the previous shot, the next shot, and then a confirmation that that is in fact the next shot, and not simply a similar looking shot. As you traverse the list, you're looking for this pattern, different, same, same different, same, same. And as long as you see that different, same, same, you know you have a proper cut. Now up here, we have quite a few edits that aren't really edits because it's same, same, same. What we can do is prune the list. Now as I jump through this list, you can see that there's this vertical green dashed line that indicates the playhead. I can also scrub through manually if I want. But as I'm going through, if I want to weed out shots 
uh, weed out cuts that aren't really cuts, I can go ahead and click the delete button. And that deletes that mark. Delete, 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 delete. That's a proper cut. I can examine all my existing cuts and there are keyboard shortcuts for traversing this list. If I press the up and down arrow keys here, I can traverse the list, verifying what's a cut and what's not really a cut. This is not really a cut, so I'll go ahead and delete that. You get the idea. The other thing you want to also double check is it's a good idea to go ahead and scrub through the interior between any two automatically detected cuts just to verify whether or not a cut has been missed. And if a cut has been missed, what you can do, in fact, do I have, yep. Here is a missed cut. What you can do is go ahead and click the Add button. When you click the Add button, we can see that we've just added an event to the list. Once you've gotten everything split up to your satisfaction, we can go ahead and click the Split button to go ahead and chop this one media file up into a group of discrete clips in the media pool. We can also save an EDL if we want to export this as an EDL that we can refer to uh, in future projects or hand off to another editor. For now, I'm going to go ahead and click the split button. Again, I wanted to make sure that my frame rate was correct. Otherwise, all of my shots would be off. I click OK. Here in the media pool, I can now see my stream of clips. And if I go into the conform page, click New, open up my master session, I can see that this master session is now a nicely chopped up project. And in particular, if I click New again, and I'm going to rename this session to be grading session and click OK. I now have, again, a chopped up series of discrete shots that I can use for navigation and grading. So those are all of the main workflows. As I mentioned before, DaVinci has a number of different sub workflows. There are lots and lots of options to accommodate many different ways of bringing in clips, working with your clips, managing projects, all of which is beyond the scale of this overview. But I do encourage you to check the documentation and the other training resources that are available. So that's my coverage of importing projects and media into DaVinci Resolve. In the next lesson, we're going to take a look at doing some simple editing within the conform page, little tips and tricks that will help you set your projects up and do the kind of online editing necessary to further prepping a project for your grade.